Carrito Parts with Bowie Television at the Under Armour Performance Center. The Baltimore Ravens are getting ready for what is probably their biggest game of the season against the Miami Dolphins. The Ravens have an opportunity to once again control their own destiny and with a win they will lock up the AFC number one seed in the playoffs and also clinch the AFC North and they could also get home field advantage. So a lot is at stake but also for the Dolphins because on their end if they win they will be number one in the AFC East and in the top two seed of the AFC playoffs for the first time since the early 90s. So there's a historical factor there. You can expect this game to be a slugfest and neither team is going to give up. Last time when they met, the Ravens had a huge lead and they lost it in the fourth quarter. So that is something that they remember and they want a different outcome this time. Mike McDonald, who's the defensive coordinator, he talked about the fact that he learned a lot from that game last year and they're not looking to replicate that because once again they could lock up everything in the AFC as needed with a win on Sunday. Big news coming out of practice this week Kyle Hamilton who re-hurt his left knee in the San Francisco 49ers game. He was at practice. He's still day by day so to be determined on whether or not he plays Sunday but it's a good sign that he was out on the practice field. Both the Ravens and the Dolphins have a ton of respect for each other. There were a lot of accolades from Lamar Jackson on Tua and Jalen Ramsey on Lamar Jackson. It all comes down to Sunday at 1 o'clock at M&T Bank Stadium. This is Karita Parts with Bowie Television. Be sure to follow us for all of your Ravens content. Uh, it's day by day. I'm still evaluating. You know, short week, um, a day less to kind of evaluate everything. But I mean, um, do everything I can to make it to the game. Kyle, what exactly happened? It looked like the you got folded up underneath you. But did you reaggravate the same injury essentially? Or? Yeah, it was the same thing. And you know, um, I was talking about taking a brace off before the game because it was annoying me. But something told me not to, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, because who knows, I don't know, the brace might have prevented something else from happening. But, yeah, I just got my ankle rolled up, and I guess that kind of went up into my knee and caused some knee pain, but I'm, I'm good. On the play where you uh, got the second interception and you were laying on the ground for a while there, what, what was going through your head at that time when you 
So you got uh, hit low and tough high. Yeah, I didn't even, obviously I didn't see the play until after the game, and uh, it was kind of wild looking at it from that perspective. But, I mean, uh, blitzing, obviously you got hit on the ground and you got landed on and kind of had to hit a hard reset on the ground. Um, caught my breath and then still the play was still going on. Just, you know, they always preach front of the ball and good things happen. And that's a, it's a great play by Marlowe at the same time, plastering uh, on a scrambling quarterback. And, in the right place at the right time. Kyle, how important was it, you know, so much talk about all the star players on the Niners side of the ball, but it was you guys, the stars, that ended up taking over the night? Uh, I mean, the same message before the game that we were saying, uh, you know, outside the building, people didn't have their own narratives, their own notions, and um, you know, I, I could honestly care less. I think a lot of people here could care less about how good or bad a team, somebody's saying that we are. And, I think the same goes for after a win like that. Uh, you got to keep the same mentality. You can't beat in all the good press that you're getting now. Um, and I feel like at the same time, everybody in here is having the same mindset that we had before the game. What's offense Yeah, there's some similarities there, but at the same time, personnel is completely different. Uh, they provide a bunch of problems on their side of the ball. They got a capable quarterback, they got a bunch of receivers, and uh, some running backs who uh, they're all really fast and do their jobs well, and I think it's up to us. That's the game plan that we have in place, which I think is a great one, and for us to go out there and get a win. Kyle, Kyle on, a, on a different note, what has been the best thing for you about working with Mike McDonald over the last two years, and what do you make of his name being in all the speculation about the head coach opening at this point? Yeah, I mean, if that, you know, we're, we're got a goal in mind still. We got to finish out what we started here, but. If that were to happen, it would be much deserved. You know, he's a young, bright star in our league, and just like the players are executing at a high level, so is he. And we don't do that without him and all the other people on the staff. So he's got a great plan in place every week, and uh, he's open to criticism for sure uh, from us. You know, when we're being a little, little uh, sensitive and bratty about stuff. And, but he hears us when we're talking to him, and I think that's a great quality. Uh, what do you mean? to know that if you win? Yeah, it was, we were kind of talking about it in the defense meeting. We get a two for one special this week. If we get a win, we win the division and we win the conference. And uh, it doesn't get much bigger than that. And I, I hope I hope that we all have the mentality. We come in, and uh, I know for a fact that we're all got everything in this game. And I know that next week, obviously, it's a big game against Pittsburgh as well. And, uh, but we got to focus on the task at hand. And, we don't uh, we don't win this week, then we still leave things up in the air. But uh, I think it's a good thing. Everything that we want in front of us is in our hands. Last one for Kyle, please. Kyle, yes, so what's your reaction to being named AFC Defensive Player of the Week after your performance in San Francisco? Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I didn't um, initially. People were talking to me about it after the game uh, about whether I win or not, um, and I was like, okay, cool, whatever. But. Uh, and then a bunch of people were coming and congratulating me like I won MVP or something. But uh, I mean, it's just another weekly accolade. I bet y'all can't name him won the Defense Player of the Week in Week Seven. So uh, it's it's cool for the time being, but we still got another another game to win. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it. Todd, how pleased were you with the offensive line's performance? Uh, they played well. Uh, thought they did. A, thought they did a great job. I mean, that's uh, that's a tough front. Man. Well coached, play hard. They're aggressive, playing at home. I thought, uh, you know, we did our fair share of chipping and some things to help sliding to certain people. But um, when they had opportunities one on one, I thought uh, for sure they held their own. And you know, Lamar is one that, um, you know, if you don't get a clean shot at him and there's some space, he does a good job of escaping. Guys, you talked about. Um you know, Lamar's vision as a runner being excellent and very, very high. I'm curious his vision as a passer, particularly when he's, you know, all those off script plays and, and extending plays and things like that. What, um, what you've seen from him, you know, throughout the first season from early to now. Yeah. I do think that's a strength of his. I do think he sees the field very well. Um, you know, take for instance, We'll, we'll talk about the scrambles first. You know, he does he does a, a tremendous job, and we've worked awfully hard with our scramble drills in terms of um, our spacing down the field, reacting to the quarterback. But even beyond that, I think he's he's able to um, 
communicate what he sees and, and you know, what he anticipates. And then when he gets outside the pocket, does a great, great job seeing things. But, you know, the touchdown to Zay, you know, m more times than not on that, we're trying to get the defense to move laterally. And we're thinking outside post rail to the back. I don't even know if we ever hit Zay one time, you know, on that part of it. But he saw the reaction of safety and uh, made an unbelievable play. Uh, Paul Lele's progress, clearly getting more opportunities now and seems to be taking advantage of them as well. well who's that? Paul Lele on the line. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've never heard someone actually say it. It's like Daniel. <laughs> like, what is that? It's like your buddies in college when they have nicknames like Ski. Like someone would call and say, is Paul there? Paul Bogowski, who's that? You know, it's a ski, you know, you just know my name. All right, Daniel. Uh, no, it's been great. Um, you know, an opportunity for him to play. You know, obviously Pat, Pat's played a bunch, you know, previously, but to get him out there and get playing and, uh, you know, with, with our situation to tackle, it's been great. Todd, how unique is that to have this rotation along the <clears throat> offensive line? It's not usually a spot that we see that type of constant rotation throughout the game. How's it been? to have those guys rotate in and keeping guys engaged throughout the course of the game? Um, it is unusual, you know, it's, uh, but uh, that's a credit to our personnel staff. You know, obviously having that depth where you feel comfortable doing that, right? I mean, um, and, and that's been um, something that's helped us with, with, with Morgan and also Ronnie as they battle through, you know, some nagging things that have continued. So uh, it's been a huge plus for us. Thought, uh what are the challenges of going against this Fangio defense that I guess kind of does a lot of the same things that, that Mike's does with the pre-snap disguises and what is Lamar's escape ability and you know, that second play ability that you've talked about maybe you guys as a kind of counter punch for on offense? Yeah, so first off, you know, they do a tremendous job. Um, to the naked eye, you would sit there and say that they're not complicated, but they do a great job with their tools um, whether it's up front or in the back end. Um, I think they do a great job. I think when you have what would be called a system, it's easier to adjust to what you do because they're, they're used to how teams are going to try to attack them. And so they immediately can get to um, another tool or another answer based on how you're attacking. I think they do a great job of adjusting. Um, their guys play awfully hard and they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Um, you know, like anything <clears throat> with Lamar is just, you know, the can, trying to continue in the past game um, in terms of consistency and drop, consistency in terms of where his eyes are at, which he's been doing a great job of. And then when the play breaks down, um, as we've said, as a two-play quarterback, are our guys continuing to understand spacing, uh, reacting, um, because that's that's got to be a big part of what we do. Todd, since the uh, the Dolphins defense has been number one, points allowed, and yards per game allowed, second sacks. Just what are you seeing on defense that is clicking for them? Oh, I, it's hard. It's hard to really say. Other than you know, obviously they got Jalen Ramsey back. That gives you comfort at the, at the one corner spot. But it's not as if they didn't have other pros playing, so that's that's a little, you know, over the top. I I look at games at the beginning and I see, you know, them playing well um, before. I see them playing well now. Sometimes there's certain matchups, you know, that play against you, or certain games that play for you. But I don't really see. I mean, they're doing the same things. They're playing awfully well, playing awfully hard. Um, you know, so I don't. I don't really. I know that's going to sound bad when I say that, but I don't see a difference. I, I thought they were really good at the beginning, and I think they're really good now. And that's, you know, um, maybe in their minds they've cleaned some things up, and they feel like they've given up less, you know, and played uh, things a little bit more, you know, cleaner. They might have been going through the same things that we went through as a new coordinator and learning adjustments on the fly and how they're playing their defense. And you'd have to ask them, but. I, th I think they've played well all year, and I think if you ask coaches that have played against them, uh, they feel awfully strong about uh, how well they played on defense. How would you know about Tyler Ligerbaum when he got here, and what has he, you know, being around him every day, how he goes about his work, obviously what he does on the field, how valuable 
valuable has, has that been to, to your offense? It's been great. You know, I mean, all he does is work. He's really smart. He's athletic. Um, you know, so, I mean, uh, it's hard to, uh, to get a guy um, as complete as he is when you talk about his, uh, his talent level, his intelligence. He, he, he loves playing the position. He really, outside of maybe the, uh, that I can think of outside of the, you know, the safety that we got with the snap. We haven't had an issue with snaps. I mean, we haven't, it's been, I mean, he's playing at an elite level, you know. So, you know, at first when I got here and I found out that, like, wasn't he the draft pick for Hollywood Brown? I was like, really? I mean, that's what we got a center instead of a big time wide on? We got Zay, I said, perfect. <laughs> so we got a wide on it, we got a center. Great. This is good stuff. Miami's pressure, you know, they got 52 sacks, but it's not kind of like here, it's not one guy with 18 or something like that. They kind of have different guys contributing to that. What do they do to pressure wise that makes them special? I think their interior guys are relentless. They do a great job of pushing the pocket, which brings the outside rushers into play. Um, you know, when they moved, you know, a uh, linebacker, you know, out, uh, what's his name? What's uh, 43. Dinkle. Dinkle does a great job on the edge. He's athletic. He can get edgy. Um, you know, they do they do a really good job. And like a lot of teams, you know, when you have relentless pass rushers and you're up in games, those, those are going to come. You know, that, that's a byproduct of teams are throwing the football. They do a great job of, I wouldn't consider them a um, pressure team by nature, but I would say that they do a good job of picking their spots. I think Long is a tremendous linebacker blitzing-wise. He gets real edgy, you know, and so, you know, it, it just compounds. I think the they're up and they're relentless. I think those are the things that, you know, you'll see a lot of sacks. A ball doesn't come out and they continue to fight, uh, you know, push the pocket. So when you go back and look at, think about some of the tape you watched when you took this job and you saw how defenses were maybe trying to stop Lamar, the, the runner at times. Do you notice the difference now when you watch film and see how defenses are guarding him? <clears throat> it's hard really for me to compare because when we've watched in the past, um, one, I wasn't here, so I wasn't as in-depth in watching it, okay, as thorough, um, and we're a little bit different in terms of our personnel groupings. So it's a little bit different to compare, you know, when you're in multiple tight end groups um, in the last year or so. Um, so, but um, certainly teams have had different plans um, and some common themes um, that they've tried to do to, um, to try and, one, uh, disrupt what we do on offense and to corral him. Um, so that is the challenge um, for us and for them you know, to see what they're trying to do. But for the most part, you'll you'll have a few wrinkles, but when you play really good defenses, just like we're about to face, they didn't get really good by changing a lot of things. You know, um, you have a belief system in what you do, and then you stick to it, and then you can live with the results. Uh, I imagine that when you were looking at the film from last year, you were in the offseason that uh, Rashad Bateman game against the Dolphins last year kind of stood out. Um, how close do you think he is to you know that kind of player, that kind of performance, and what have you seen from him as he's developed and gotten healthier over this past year? Uh, great question. You know, I mean, you, you really can see with each day, each week, him gaining more and more confidence, um, his ability to practice, basically almost being out a year. Uh, not, not really, I mean, but missing the off is a better way of putting in a lot of camp, but you can see his confidence beginning to grow. Um, and he's playing faster, you can see that. And he has it in him, and so um, it's been better every week, and he's been able to practice every week, and, and that's a big part of a player's development. When you have a skill set that he has, and he loves football, he, he likes to practice, so it's just a matter of staying healthy, and that development will continue to come. Good. Thank you, Coach. Mike, we saw the... Uh... After the last interception, we saw the, the double fist pump and the bellow, and it looked like you almost took Weaves' hand off with the dive. Yeah. Uh, why do you think that release of emotion came at that at that moment? Oh man, uh, it was just a, it was a great moment for us to close the game out. And at that point, the game it wasn't 
entirely over, you know, if they scored probably in an onside situation with timeout. So, you know, you're, you, you know, you close a game out, uh, you know, that magnitude and, I, you know, just, you're just juiced about the guys and the, the performance that the guys put out there and, and it, it just came out. Mike, how do you handle uh, Miami's team speed? The last time you asked me a question, Mike, we played pretty good on defense. So. I'm asking you again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hopefully repeat that. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a, definitely. I mean, it's a challenge. It's unique to the rest of the league because it's just it's at every spot. You know, every 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 guy that can touch the ball can take off and score from any point. So uh, it sounds cliche, but it is all eleven. I mean, you have to take great angles. You have to have um, great force, great secondary force. And a third guy in the alley, you know. So it, and and the ball can hit at any point in the field. They'll, you know, anywhere from the a gap all the way out to the into the alley. So um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. So you know how we structure things and how we play blocks, and uh, you know, it, so they do some things schematically that are a little different that we've seen uh, in the run game and the perimeter, uh, like uh, you know, screen game. So. Um, uh, we're getting a great look this week, you know. I think the guys have practiced well, you know, today and the walkthrough yesterday. But you know, definitely a, need so to attack that the rest of the week. They run a lot of tosses on the outside. Is that something you've emphasized to your defensive ends or your outside guys that probably need to be a yeah. little bit more disciplined? Stay but, on? Well, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's it's everyone that's responsible for the perimeter, right? It's not just the defensive end. Sometimes those guys are unblocked and they're getting cracks, you know, so they got to be able to play those blocks, but it's the guys behind them, too, that have to replace when their guy blocks the perimeter, too. Mike, how much do you reference, you know, preparing this week, do you reference last year's game with them, and how much have you grown as a coordinator since then? That was really, really on in your yeah. play-calling career. Uh, you know, we haven't we haven't talked about last year. Um, so far into the season, completely new team, uh, but personally, you know, of course you're going to learn from that game last year. Um, you want to learn quicker, quicker than not, you know, than not because you're playing the, the next week. So, if you're not learning on a week-to-week -week basis off of how your guys are playing and how you're calling things and how you're structuring game plans and the positions your guys are, um, you're trying to put your your guys in, and, um, how things are ruled out, and how clear they are, um, then you're, you're doing your team a disservice. So, that's something that we take a lot of pride in of trying to learn from week to week. Um, and definitely that game, you look back and. Um, we made a lot of corrections after that game, you know, take strides for the rest of the year. And, you know, unfortunately, those are going to happen in the NFL. It's about how you respond as a team and taking responsibility for, you know, things that you can improve on, I think, as a team and definitely individually. I think that was our approach then. And, uh, that's a long time ago, man. Um, you know, we're going uh, But, you know, you're obviously going to try to learn from, from every, every setback that you have. Mike, what's the challenge of how you defend Tyree Kill? kind of, uh, you know, you guys have physical corners. How do you try to go back and forth with whether or not you want to press a guy like that, give him space, because yeah. he, he's shown he can win in both ways? Well, they do a great job of getting him the ball creatively. Um, so, you you know, it's it's different if someone just lines up at the X and he's on the ball and he's not moving and you know where he's going to be. Uh, that's definitely not the case with uh, with uh, Tyreek. So, um, you know, we have, some, we have some initial plans on how we want to uh, handle it. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm the bulger right now, but um, it's a challenge, you know, on how they move them. It's a credit to them with their system and the things that he's able to do from different spots. Mike, how, how do you go about preparing to face a guy like that in practice? I mean, is it a by committee thing? Do you have a do it as a designated Tyreek guy? I mean, there's not a lot of guys who kind of run with his speed. <laughs> yeah, you try your best you can. We got, we got a, our, our look team does a great job. I mean, so there's a lot of times we're looking at like, man, well, that's not going to work because they, you know, they do such a, they give such a great look. So, um, it's a con we were just talking actually talking to some of the DBs today. Hey, it's a constant evaluation of what we're executing well throughout throughout the game or, or throughout the week, excuse me. Uh, and then as the week starts to unfold on, on how we decide to, to play the game, um, you know, you're constantly evaluating that and then saying, hey, okay, guys, I think we're going to go this direction going into the game, and obviously you'll adjust as the game kind of unfolds. But um, our look team does a great job of getting the splits and the releases, and our our young guys um, do a great job of getting those guys ready to go said a lot about how these three offenses, the Rams and the Dolphins are about to face and the Niners have very similar offenses. The way that the Dolphins motion though, do, do, how you, do you kind of have to put them in their own category from those other teams? Well, um, I'd say they 
the thing they share is they motion frequently and with fast motion with condensed sets, but um, it's a little bit, each team has definitely a different personality of how they're operating and why and who's doing it. Um, like I referenced last week, there's always a rhyme or reason on what they're trying to achieve. Um, these guys definitely operate independently of those two, even though it's you know similar family of offenses, probably similar terminology, things like that. But um, uh, it's, a, it's a unique operation on their end. Mike, in the, this time of year, you inevitably get people start to speculate about head coach openings. Your name has been very popular in that conversation in the last few weeks. How do you deal with that? Do you compartmentalize it? Do you ignore it completely? I mean, you know, what do you kind of make of that? Oh man, it's uh, but it's hard. It's hard to ignore. It's um, it's it's an and it's an honor to hear about it. I mean, it's such a, it's such a unique opportunity when it does come up. Um. For guys that know me, I'm a one-track guy. It's very difficult for me to kind of do two things at once. So try your best to, you know, just focus on the things that we need to focus on, you know, which is the next game and getting our guys in position to win. Um, but, you know, I, I, thought, I thought you guys would probably ask about this at, at some point, but I think it's an opportunity to talk about, like, when we, when we started our staff at the beginning of last year, we, we said we were all in all together. We wanted to do it together as a staff and be a collaboration. And so... To have that opportunity, or you know, have your name come up like that, like I think, it's really a reflection of, of our of our coaches and our staff together. I mean, we're we got a great staff, man. Our coaches do a phenomenal job of, of prepping our guys on a week to week basis, getting buy in. We have such a diverse um, group of thought, and uh, we're not afraid to challenge one another too. So I mean, we'll, we'll crack a joke and we have a good time, but. Um, those guys deserve a lot of credit too for, for what, the position that we've been able to put our guys in as well. So, have you gotten any phone calls yet, Mike? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Mike, uh, I think too has got the fastest time to throw in the NFL. Um, how, how challenging is it to kind of disrupt his rhythm, and you know, especially when his first and second options are usually pretty open? Yeah, easier said than done. Um, something that we're always stressing is marrying the Russian coverage together. Uh, you know, it's if you're. It's easy to say we own a disguise in, in, in light of the quarterback, but if it's a progression read, it's very difficult if they're just looking at spots. And his eyes are very disciplined. Obviously, they got really fast guys that they can create space. So, um, we're going to try our best to disrupt some timing. And obviously, our rushing coverage, our, our rush has to come alive. You know, even if the ball's out fast, if you're consistently, you know, consistently bringing, we finally, you know, do get him to hold the ball and try to get to a second or third option. Maybe, maybe it'll come alive. And then if the ball's out fast, if we can, you know, get get our hands on the ball up front, that'll uh, that'll go a long way as well. Play uh, throughout this season, just gonna keep encouraging them uh, to just go out there and uh, just let it rip, uh, have fun, doing what they're doing, and uh, guys are making plays for us right now. Questions? Chris, uh, in the post game uh, speech from John on the report he said that there was the best game in all three phases and mentioned special teams specifically. What did you like about the performance from the 49ers? You know, I just thought uh, we went out and our guys, uh, one of the things we, we've continued to do is uh, really just maximize our effort, uh, our physicality, uh, go out there and just and just play hard. And then we had an opportunity to really execute some plays. Uh, we had another good punt return. Um, Tyler's doing a great job. Again, he's taking advantage of his opportunities. Uh, we got guys covering kicks well. You know, obviously uh, we let one get out uh, on us for a little bit, but you know what? It didn't hurt us. Uh, that was a good returner back there. Um, you know, and just to see our guys just go around, fly around, uh, get off the ball and knock guys back and really play a physical football game um, against a physical team really uh, showed us, you know, kind of who we are. And then when you look at the other phases, you know, our field goal block, our field goal team, you know, those guys have been outstanding the last couple of weeks and just making kicks, um, the, the protection, all those things that we talked about uh, when it wasn't going well. We just want to make sure we continue to keep that up. Chris, I know the goal is always to, to get better, but do you feel like this is as well as the, the whole special teams group has played this year, just where you guys are right now? I do. I think this is. Uh, I think we're we're starting to hit our hit our stride at the right time. You know, obviously some of the things that happened early in the year really uncharacteristic. Really came down to kind of one thing, uh, guy here or there. But I think all eleven guys are starting to play as one, and uh, as we continue to do that, you'll continue to see us make a lot more plays. Tyler seems to get the very most out of his, his return opportunities. He's not a you know, crazy burner. He's not the most elusive guy, but he seems every time to get the most out of what could be there. Why, how does he do that? 
I, I, I think it's just Phil. You know, I think it's a guy. I think it's a guy that understands natural ability with the ball in his hands. Um, you know, it's those things, and it's just this guy. It's the right ball, and he's making great decisions. He's making the right decisions, and, and again, he is taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, he's a skilled player. You know, uh, he's good with the ball in his hands. He can make guys miss, and as as we found out, he's a strong runner. You know, and so that's that's good to see. Is he more decisive, or is there a call that you guys have to let him know when to return or not to return? I wouldn't say he's more decisive, Mike. I think it's more of uh, how how efficient can we be. We talk a lot about efficiency uh, because every ball is not a, a returnable ball, and I think when when he does return the ball, he's getting those yards. I think all of our returns have done that for us. Good. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Chris.